I, you know, I dreamt. I started dreaming of becoming a filmmaker in my thirties. I'm, I'm actually glad that I spent, you know, 28 years getting experiences in other, in other areas and, and doing many other jobs and doing shitty jobs and doing, you know, like diving for seaweed as a job. And it, it gets easier the more, uh, obviously, the more that you do. And you stick to your vision. Art support. Most of my scripts have taken, this is the truth, probably about seven years between writing and getting made. Filmmaking was never really my dream. It wasn't my, it was like a, it wasn't my tight top shelf dream. It was sort of like a lower level, bottom shelf dream. Um, I had other dreams that um, I didn't achieve, so <laughs> disappointed. <laughs> Very disappointed in that, but bittersweet because also now um, Rich. How oh, everything happened in my life, when it started, I didn't start making films until I was, what, 30? Perfect. Very happy with that. I came to filmmaking quite late, so I was... I was basically, I was basically painting all through my 20s, and then about 28 or 29, I decided that I was gonna... that one thing I hadn't tried was filmmaking, and I was doing a, a TV show in New Zealand called... Uh, I'm not gonna say what it was, what it was called but I was playing a stripper. And I was sitting in the green room in like a G-string, eating cans of tuna. And, <laughs> and I was like, you know what? I think that there's something else out there for me. <laughs> that was the moment. Yeah, that was the moment. The I said, we were sitting there, I was like, <laughs> like looking at my ingrown hairs place. on my leg, I was like, there's gotta be something more for me. Is my destiny to realise someone else's dream of making a TV show about a strip club? And, um, and that's when I wrote my first short film, it was in that green room. Mm. But it was really like, I'm not like one of those, like, you know, guys who grew up, you know, with a um, Super 8 camera, you know, as a 10 year old. Was, dreaming of, of yeah. being a filmmaker, sure. I, you know, I dreamed, I started dreaming of becoming a filmmaker in my 30s. Right. So that, it was like an arranged marriage, really. Yeah. I'm, I'm actually glad that I spent, you know, 28 years getting experiences in other, in other areas and, and doing many other jobs and doing shitty jobs and doing, you know, like diving for seaweed as a job and definitely hospitality and, yeah, just all sorts of things just to get by. But I think there's a lot of experiences in that that, that I've always drawn on, which has helped me a lot in my writing. For me... I think my, if I'd made a feature at 21, it would have been terrible and I wouldn't be here. But when I was starting off, I could have easily just taken all the notes and just listened to them. And one of the problems we've always had in development is being that the, um, the, the development staff come in. By the time you've like, done all the notes and you've developed the script to you, then new people come in. And then they read the script and they go, oh, what's this? And I go back to the first draft. And then so you start the development process. So I know people who have gone through development for like eight years. My development process is I just develop stuff with myself. So I write my scripts without asking for any finance for writing. I just do it for myself and get it to the best place that I can imagine the film being. And then go and say, it's not going to get any better than this, yes or no. Because I have a lot of friends who are writers and they say things like, oh, I've got this great idea, it's about this and this and this. I say, oh great, so you should write that. And they go, mm, I'm going to wait until I get some funding. <laughs> and, uh, I, thought uh, I thought you were a writer. And they go, yeah, no, no, but I'm going to wait until, you know, because I'm going to put, put in my like, petition and get, get, some, get some money and then I could start writing. That's not how it works. You just, if you want to write something, you're passionate about it, you just got to write it. Like, you just got to write it. You stick to your vision, and, and I'm always very wary about giving advice because um, I was told by the older generation of filmmakers, and now I realise I shouldn't have listened to them in the first <laughs> in my first short films and stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, like I, the two kinds of one night. There's edits and that, which I instinctively knew I wanted to do a certain thing in in the film, but I was convinced by by people who had more experience not to do them and to do to edit things in a certain way. And then, only like a year or two later, I realised, like, damn, I was right. The kind of stories I wanted to tell, and I was very self-centred in the, in, the, in the early days where I was just like, oh, just my vision and my, you know, it's my story. And if the audience doesn't get it, well, they're just dumb. Like, <laughs> but you, you just can't think like that. The first thing I consider now is what the audience experience is going to be. Yeah. There's good stories to be told, but also 
it's it's entertainment and it's you know you have to actually you're serving the audience so you you know they are paying eighteen dollars nowadays probably you know for the right to come in and observe and criticize your work and you can't get upset with them for if, you know if they don't like it you've got to work your hardest to try and make something that you know is a gift to them and that they are satisfied with at the end. I love working with, with actors who I know well because I can you can just get past all the bullshit and just say that was boring. <laughs> Do it again. You know, like you, you know, instead of like, mm, well, uh, you know, uh, you know, let's just talk about why. I see what you're doing there. It was really great, but is there another way we can sort of get it? So like a, let's make it more of a dance. It's like you just, you know, it's a bit of like, that was shitty. Do it again. Make it better. <laughs> and say it faster. But I learned to really um, tr trust all the people around me. And having people around who, who, f who had permission to say that was terrible. You know, if I really felt mm. it, like, you know, and I, could, uh, and I can trust people to say that to me and not feel bad about it. Because 80% uh, of the time, it probably is bad. What being creative is about is, being, is having fun and looking at life through like a, sort of the lens of a child, really, thing. I come from like a background where people have said, oh, no, you have to have one job and stick with it. Well, I don't believe that. I think that in this day and age, you know, you, people have things that they want to express and you know you need to have a wide range of tools and you know filmmaking, painting, acting, poetry, all that stuff, they're all tools. Rousseau is one of my favorite artists, you know they said he couldn't paint, um, you know if you can put paint on a brush and apply it to something you can paint, you know what he couldn't do was paint in the style of everyone of the day. So I think failure is a brilliant thing, it teaches you a lot of stuff, and um, and you know, and you you end up um, coming up with better ideas often when you, you when you fail at things. Um, and you know, I think what's really great also is learning to embrace bad experiences, bad creative experiences, and you know, watch bad movies, you know, read bad books, and because all of that stuff sometimes it teaches you what not to do. Yeah, and that's one thing I, I realized early on. It's like, yeah. Write what you know. Just wrote based on conversations that I remembered from being a kid okay. with that, you know, with my family. Luckily, I come from a culture who makes fun of themselves a lot. You know, we're mm. very self-deprecating. We like we. I think we find the the humour we find is in the situation we're in. We're funny people, and we we laugh a lot. We you know we joke about everything from being poor to being starving to being you know to being in jail, to be, every sort of shitty situation will find a way to, to make light of it. No, when I wrote Boy, the first version of Boy was super depressing <laughs> and super sad and Hunt for the Water People, the first version was like, just sad and I was just like, oh, I'm going to be like Lucas Moodison and I'm going to make a really depressing film. I realised I don't know how to do that. Mm. I'm not good at that. And so I just I decided to just look at what I was good at. Like, I just, I decided, I made a, a choice. I, was like, I, I said to myself, do you really like depressing films? And I said back to myself in a husky voice, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> and, you know, I then, and Jermaine said a really important thing to me when we were doing, when we were shooting, what well, we were doing in the shadows. There was a point where we were like, mm, we're turning like a five minute idea into a feature film, this is what we're doing. And he goes, dude, the world needs stupid shit. Who wants to go and see a film that reminds us about how terrible the world is? We just like go on Twitter and uh, you know, <laughs> let's just look at the news and save ourselves two hours. Here's the thing, 90% of all ideas are shit and 90% of all art is terrible. 90% of all movies are pretty bad. And I think if you kind of take that ratio into account, it allows you to relax a lot more. You know, you don't have to worry about making something good all the time. Um, when I'm writing, I know that a lot of it is, is should never see the light of day. Don't get too comfortable. That's my advice.